Mac Voices is supported by Eero, the wireless mesh network solution that you need. Visit Eero.com to get yours and use the coupon code MacVoices to receive free overnight shipping. And by Mac Voices Magazine, our free flipboard magazine that brings you some of the best Mac, iPhone, and iPad productivity tips on the web. High in signal, low in noise, just like Mac Voices, Mac Voices Magazine includes information on how you can get more out of your Apple technology. Subscribe at macvoices.com slash magazine or search for Mac Voices Magazine on Flipboard. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, today, today we're going to talk about Instagram with someone who descri just described himself to me as an Instagram prophet. I'm not quite sure what that means, but we'll find out. Um, I know I struggle a little bit with Instagram. I'm always interested. It's a fun place to go and visit and see some really amazing photos. But I never feel like I have that much to contribute, not that much to add to Instagram. And so I'm anxious to find out just how, how maybe we should all look at Instagram. And for that, I have Julio Oceda Zapata um, of the St. Paul Pioneer Press here to try to help us understand how he uses it and why he is so enthusiastic about it. Julio, welcome. It's great to have you. Yeah, thanks. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you being here. You had floated this idea to me a while back, and it was one of those that I just never kind of got to. And then a couple things happened that made me say, Instagram, you know, I got I to gotta start paying more attention. And then I realized that you wanted to talk about this, and it's like, okay, this is perfect. Um, so let's start out with just why Instagram? Why are you so high on Instagram? Well, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, uh, as a tech writer, I, I tend to latch on to the latest tech tools. I remember uh, years ago when Instagram first came out, I created an account, tried it out, uh, thought it was kind of kind of amusing wrote some stories about it and then kind of forgot about it uh but then i i kind of circled back later on because um uh iphone users uh, uh to a large extent to be tend to be very interested in photography because the, the cameras on iphones are very good uh a lot of people get really obsessed with photography uh but i've never liked Flickr. Flickr's I, th I think it's just kind of a weird uh, uh, service. Um, Facebook is, um, I get annoyed with Facebook because it's very, um, it's, I'm, I'm very OCD and I like things tidy and simple and, and Facebook <laughs> is, is anything but. And, and so it was sort of a, sort of a confluence. I, I wanted, um, I like social media, but I like my social media simple and elegant. I like photography. Um, and, um, I, I gave Instagram a, a second look, and it kind of pushed all my buttons. It's just a really fun place uh, to share the, the interesting photos that I take. Like over here in Minnesota, uh, right now the fall colors are in full bloom. So that's you know an, an example of something that that I, that I just like to share, and I'll share it on Twitter. I will share it on Facebook, but um, I have to say, Facebook, uh, Instagram is my favorite social network because it's, it, it allows me to share my favorite images. It's very simple, very elegant, and it's a, it's a social network in its own right. Um, this is something that I sort of latched onto later. Initially, I was just using it as a place to post my photos, uh, and later on, it sort of dawned on me, oh, you know, this is actually a social network. I should treat it that way, and I've sort of been... Uh, being more uh, aggressive about you know finding interesting people to meet on Instagram and so forth, sharing photos. I followed all. Initially, I didn't really follow anybody, but now I'm, I'm I followed all my I'm following all my friends on Instagram, and it's been it's been wonderful to see the images that that my that my friends are are posting. So I'm I'm having I'm having a lot of fun with Instagram. It's great. Okay, so let's let's hit the very first thing right out of the gate. Do you consider yourself a photographer, or do you consider yourself someone that takes pictures? Uh, that's a very good question. You, you might say I'm somewhat in the middle. I'm not somebody who just very casually takes photos with an iPhone uh, at the other, and I'm not somebody who's a Photoshop expert. I, I Photoshop gives me a headache. I just I just never use it, um, and I don't I don't have any fancy camera gear. So let's let's just, let's just put it that way. But I'm very obsessed about uh, uh, creating, you know, high quality 
visually engaging imagery uh, with my phone. I just I just love to do that. I'm very obsessed with it. I take a lot of photos. Uh, I've gotten, I think, pretty good at it. I you I do that personally. I also do that professionally as a journalist at the Pioneer Press. Um, very often, um, uh, a photographer might not be available for a story that I'm covering, so I'll just go ahead and take the photos myself. And I think I do a pretty good job. Um, and as the cameras on the iPhones have gotten better and better, this has become more and more satisfying kind of a thing. Initially, you know, you feel like you're limiting yourself because you're using a phone that has sort of a mediocre camera. And year after year, that is less and less the case. Uh, the, the cameras on, on the iPhones have just gotten amazing. Um, and I've just, I've, I've been able to craft some really satisfying photography. I mean, some of the images uh, I've taken are, are amazing. Um, if I take a photo and, um, and some of the, some of the folks in the Mac community who are really, uh, uh, acknowledged photo experts praise me highly in photos that I've taken. I think I'm, I'm sort of headed in the right direction. So, <laughs> well, I think that's, that was probably one of the mis mistakes I made at first because photo Instagram came out. And so I was looking for photographers to follow and I started following people like Derek story and the images are beautiful. And it's like, well, I can't compete with this. I, you know, I, I, I would be borderline embarrassed to publish some of my some of the shots and i also don't have that eye for things you know i mean sure i'll recognize a beautiful scene that's in front of me and say wow i'd love to capture that but i don't have that gift at least not so far that i've been able to develop for going out taking a a walk and saying oh you know there's a really interesting piece of bark to photograph on the mm -hmm. tree i just don't have it so that's why I ask you about being a photographer. I think that that is something that is holding, has held me back and holds other people back for the same reason, that they're not sure that they're, they're good enough. Yeah, I, I think I have the knack. Uh, I'm not, I, I wouldn't so, go so far as to say I could make a living as a professional photographer. If I have attempted to do that, my family would probably starve. But, um, but uh, just as a, as, a, as a phone photography hobbyist, um, I've gotten better and better. I'm really, I'm really pleased with that. When I write, I write a lot of stories for tidbits, um, and very often I'll do the, all the photography for the stories. And um, I've been, I've been pretty happy with the way those have turned out. And and Adam Hanks and company are, are pretty happy with it too. Okay, so let's let's assume that that I I or the the, the listener gets comfortable enough that they w have photos they want to share. They think they're okay, or that that's not a barrier for them. And, and honestly, I have learned that that should not be a barrier because share what you got, and you know that's great. Um, do you use the Instagram app, Julio, or how do you actually interact with Instagram on a, on a consistent basis? Well, uh, I, I obviously use the Instagram app on the phone quite a bit um, when I'm out and about. Um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a bicyclist, for instance, and I'll go out on long bike rides. And you know how the, the bicycling jerseys have the three pockets in the back. One of I, I'll jam my phone in there. And when I see something interesting to uh, photograph, I'll screech to a halt and take a photo. And very often I will upload it then and there. Uh, because I use a, a fitness app called Strava and Strava, uh, you can connect Strava and Instagram together. And so if you take uh, a Instagram photo during the time frame that your ride is occurring, um, and then you later um, uh, upload your ride data, it'll, it'll grab the Instagram data and link all the photos to the ride. So, so um, in a, in a on the go, fitness kind of a scenario uh i typically will use the instagram app on the phone and and um typically i will do some light edits using the app and then upload the photos then and there so that's that's one scenario uh there's another completely different scenario which is um uh using instagram on the mac uh, this is something that a lot of people don't know about there are a number of very effective ways to uh, interact with Instagram on a Mac uh, instead of a phone. And and I must confess, as somebody who's in his 50s, I, I'm not as as comfortable, you know, doing this with with the phone as younger people are. I, it gets it gets very tiring. And uh, Instagram has not made its native apps very iPad friendly, so that's not really much of an option either. But there are apps on the Mac that lets you upload to Instagram. 
this is something that a lot of people don't know about, but you can actually have a very full, satisfying, complete uh, Instagram experience on your on your Mac, on your MacBook or your iMac. And um, that is one of the things that has made me uh, kind of an Instagram fanatic because if it were just the phone, I would get tired of it. It would be kind of annoying after a while, but uh, I'm at the point where about 80% of my Instagram activity is actually on the Mac and not the phone. Um, I'll, 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 uh, I'll take photos that I share on Google photos and uh, Facebook and Twitter, but then I will, I will cherry pick, you know, the best images on Instagram. Uh, quality is better than quantity. You don't like upload all of your photos from a party to Instagram. You, you, you're very selective. You pick, uh, a high quality iconic image and and share you know very sparingly uh, um, and that that's what I'll do I'll, I'll cherry pick you know something from Google Photos that I think is appropriate for Instagram I'll do some edits on it you know there are a lot of photo editing apps you know just get it just right and then use one of these Mac apps and upload it to Instagram so I, I do that a lot I also do that uh, I do that personally and I also do that professionally because at the St. Paul Pioneer Press I, I run the the newspapers um uh, Instagram account. I'm, I'm the guy, I'm the Instagram guy at the paper. And, um, uh, our newsroom is windows based, but at one point I, I said, you know, this sucks. So I, I brought in my, my, my own, I brought in my own Mac mini and plopped it on the desk and connected it to my monitors and upgraded, you know, is sort of un, in an unauthorized fashion, upgraded myself to the Mac at the newsroom. So I'm, I'm Mac everywhere. And so I do a lot of Instagram stuff professionally at the St. Paul Pioneer Press newsroom on my Mac Mini uh, using all these apps I mentioned. So, I, how many times have we heard those kind of stories? That people just get so frustrated, they get frustrated to the point. Fine, I'll bring my own gear. You know, just stop making me use this other stuff. We could go down that road, and we'd be doing a whole different show. So let's pull back here. Talk about some of the Mac apps that you're talking about, because that was, I know, at one point, one of my frustrations. I've got all the. I'm looking at all these beautiful photos of all these fantastic people, and I'm having to look at them on my phone or my iPad. And hey, there's nothing wrong with the phone screen, but you know, I've also got this gorgeous 5K iMac here. I would kind of like to be able to enjoy some photos on there. Mm -hmm. So. And, and and you were talking about posting as well as that. So, what do you uh, what do you advocate? Well, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll name a few of them, and then we can put some information in the show notes. Um, so I'm just gonna there like if you go to the Mac App Store and, and punch in Instagram, you you come up with uh, several dozen results, and and some of them are very very low quality. You just you just don't want to bother with them at all. But there are, are a few that are really good for a whole bunch of different reasons. Um, there's one called Grids, G-R-I-D-S. Um, and Grids is a really fantastic app. It's, it, it's um, a full screen app. You can, you can do the full screen thing on your screen. Uh, and it's a fantastic way to navigate. It's a, it's a good Instagram browser. You can punch in, um, you can follow, you can punch in all the accounts uh, that I like I have the Pioneer Press account and I have my personal account and you can put those all in the app and then you can uh, it's a good way to uh, to browse through your streams on your various accounts but then it's also a good way to publish it's a good so it's a it's a it's an inter it's an Instagram navigator Instagram browser and it's also an Instagram publisher um, is it so fair, I, is it I, fair to compare it to something like tweetbot um, that you know, that is a browser that sits in, in an application that, you know, you obviously monitors your, monitors your Twitter feeds. Is that this the same kind of concept? That's a very astute question. Um, and I'll answer it this way. Uh, Grids is a little more like TweetDeck. You know, TweetDeck is this massive uh, dashboard kind of an app that sort of fills your screen. Right. Uh, Grids is a little more TweetDeck-like than TweetBot-like. Um so, you know, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, and I use them in similar ways. Uh, at, uh, at, at the office, I have these two big monitors coming up to my Mac mini and I'll have like my, uh, my Gmail and, and, and my, and Chrome on one side. And then I've, I've dedicated the monitor on the left to, uh, tweet deck if I'm doing Twitter and that fills the screen completely. 
And if I want to do Instagram, I'll get rid of TweetDeck and throw throw grids on there. And it's a full screen experience. Uh, I'm trying to use words to describe how awesome grids is. And, and my words are inadequate. You really have to try it. But it's um, it's it's the it's the ultimate uh, Instagram app if you're on a Mac. And it, there, and it also there's also a Windows version for all three of the of your viewers who, who are using Windows computers. So um, so it's it's cross platform, which is really fantastic. Um, and so so uh, so grids is to tweet deck like tweetbot is to another Instagram app, which I call, which is called flume. Now flume is very much like, uh, like tweetbot in that it's not a full screen. It's kind of a one column kind of a thing, but flume, uh, is very similar to grids in that it's a good way to browse Instagram to sort of follow all your friends, uh, see all, all the, uh, the feeds from your various accounts, but it's also a good way to publish. You hit the, um, exactly as you would, uh, hit the publish button on, on, uh, Twitter, you know, the new Twitterific, for instance, the new Twitterific, you hit the publish button and a little window appears and you do your thing and you hit send. Uh, flume is exactly the same way in a very elegant, very polished, very beautiful way. So flume, if uh, if your viewers are enchanted with uh, with Tweetbot or Twitterific, uh, Flume, and they use Instagram, Flume is right off the rally. It's a very it's a very satisfying app. Um, they they recently uh, they they were until recently they were on the Mac App Store, but they had a little disagreement with Apple, and so they're selling their app uh, uh, from their own site. But it's 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 exactly it's exactly the same as it was so so flume flume you know highly recommended um i'm just kind of going app by app here uh there's another uh instagram app called photodesk now photodesk is a completely different animal it's like grids in that it's kind of a full screen tr- treatment that le- uh that lets you uh browse or navigate instagram does not have publishing capability. You can't post to it, but it's a really powerful app in that if you're using, um, if you're a power user or you're using Instagram professionally, uh, PhotoDesk is great because it has a lot of analytics tools built into it. So if you want to like dissect and analyze uh, what what you're doing on Instagram, uh, PhotoDesk is a good option. Uh, It's not, it's sort of, uh, it's not the prettiest of apps, but it's extremely powerful in what it, it in that it lets you sort of analyze. Like if you want to really, in a very, uh, in a very granular way, understand what is happening on Instagram with your various feeds, that's, that's a good way to go. So, um, and then another, another app that I like is called Uplet. Uh, Uplet is, one of a number of uh, Instagram utilities that are available for the Mac that let that are just uploaders. Uh, there are not tools for browsing or navigating uh, Instagram. They're 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 purely upload utilities, and these things are all over the place. Some of them are very crude, unreliable, you know, very ugly, and they come from questionable sources in strange countries um, and. They're not very trustworthy, but I have found Uplet to be really fantastic. Um, very elegantly designed, very Mac-like, um, very simple. You could just kind of drag photos into the window and upload them. If you can, you can mass upload photos. Like if you have five photos that you want to upload at the same time, you can kind of throw them in all at the same time, create captions for each one, hit send. Uh, one of my big gripes with Uplet until recently was um, the fact that it did not support multiple accounts. They 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 re- very recently fixed that, um, so you can you can switch from account to account. <clears throat> so um, I'm just trying to have a cold, so I'm kind of losing my voice a little bit. Um, but Uplet is if you just want an uploader, just an upload utility, it's it's absolutely fantastic. So 
um, those are kind of kind of kind of my, my favorite apps, and they sort of run the gamut from you know from very elaborate full screen apps to you know very simple apps that do very simple things. So, and I, I use them all uh, in in various capacities. Eero is my choice for a wireless mesh network solution for my home, and I think it should be yours too. Installation was a snap. Plug in the Eero, download the Eero iOS app, and follow the screens. The Eero has a single light to let you know what's going on as you set it up. The only thing you need to decide on is the name of your new network and the password. Tell Eero what room the Eero is located in and you're set. The Eero beacons come next. Go to either the farthest reaches of your house or an area where your Wi-Fi has been weak in the past, find an outlet, and plug it in. Tell the Eero app that you want to add a beacon, identify the room in the house, and boom, the setup is done and your network is ready. That's it. No codes, no logging into a confusing control panel, just easy network management from the app. Something I haven't mentioned before, keeping your router up to date with the latest software patches and revisions is critical, with a capital C, in today's hacked, breached, compromised environment. In typical Eero fashion, they make it easy because they push the software updates straight to your Eero. You're always current, always have the latest features, and always have the best Eero you can possibly have. The second generation Eero has added a radio to become a tri-band system twice as fast as before. It sits flat on your desk and doesn't take up as much room as many other routers. It can connect via Ethernet to be as versatile as you need it to be with your network set up. It even has a new thread radio so you can connect your low power devices such as light bulbs, wireless switches, and the like. In short, it does everything you want a wireless router to do, does them easily, and does them all well. I hope you've decided that Eero is for you. If not, well, that's your loss. Guess you'll just have to continue to have spotty Wi-Fi coverage, do the manual updates, study that complex control panel, and everything else you're doing to maintain your network. But if you're tired of that, visit Eero.com and use the code MACVOICES for free overnight shipping. Order today, be up and running with Eero tomorrow. You're going to love it. So again, Eero.com and use the coupon code MACVOICES at checkout to get free overnight shipping. Thanks to Eero for their support of Mac Voices. I, I like the idea of of having the option to, f for me, of having the option to put something on my desktop like Twitter uh, or Tweetbot that will, you know, let me kind of keep me up to speed with things so that I don't have to actively. It's almost a passive experience for me um, until I decide to turn my attention to it. You know, yeah, let them scroll by. Let me see what's going on. But I don't have to really do anything other than just launch the app. And because that that's the – for me, that was sort of the fallacy with the iPhone is, okay, I have to actively sit down and think, all right, it's time to look at Instagram now. And that time just – very seldom came for me, so that's I'm I'm kind of excited about that. Do, um, yeah, and 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 you 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 raise a good point. Um, uh, you know, sometimes you have to remind yourself to like get on a social network that you're using, and it's nice to automate it in the sense that you can put a little a little side column on you know the left or the right side of your Mac screen, and just as. Uh, uh, Twitter's Mac client or, you know, the new Twitter effort for the Mac are, are good for doing that with Twitter. You can just put that on on one side of your screen and just have the little window scroll. Um, a, an app like uh, like Flume is perfect for Instagram because you just, just put that on, on one side of your screen and, and just watch the magic happen. So you don't have to remind yourself. You just put it there and it's, it's always there when you want to look at it. So. And what I've, I've personally found was that when I did that, started doing that with Twitter, um, I, I, I've, I've wanted to be, I became more involved, you know, and you could argue, well, that's, you know, that you're just sucking down productivity time. Yeah, perhaps, but these are important channels that you need to pay attention to. And if I had to mark time off on my calendar every day to go and look at Instagram, it probably wasn't going to happen because there's always something more pressing. But if it's just sort of there and if a photo grabs your attention, you're going to look at it, then you're going to want to find out more about who, you know, who who published it and how they're using it, why they're using it. And it and it sucks you in. Facebook was the same way, although Facebook still doesn't have, at least in my opinion, a decent Mac app. Um, the, the 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 iOS app is okay, 
But, you know, I, again, I don't want to go too far down that road, but I do think it's important to draw the comparisons, especially to social networks that people probably are a little more active on, maybe a little more comfortable with, and say, you know, go check out Instagram, but check it out in this fashion, in a fashion that you already know and that works for you. Yep, exactly. And um, and the thing I would say about Instagram is um, don't force it. I mean, try it. If you don't like it, don't feel guilty that it, it isn't working for you. Yeah. But if you have a lot of friends, if you have a lot of friends on social media, the odds are a lot of your Facebook or Twitter friends are also on Instagram, and Instagram actually lets you go out and search your your Facebook friends to see who which of those are on Instagram. So it's really e really easy to get started. And if you like taking photos, if and you, uh, you really enjoy taking photos, and you're a social kind of person, and you like to share your photos, and so forth, um, in my opinion, Instagram is is the is the perfect uh, place for that because Instagram is not a one size fits all photo service. Um, Google Photos, uh, uh, Apple Photos, and so forth, they're a good place. They're a good repository for all your photos. You kind of throw all your photos on there. And there are some sharing options, but they're they're they are not primarily what those services are about. Those services are about saving, archiving your photos, and sharing is you know sort of a added bonus. Uh, Instagram is completely different. It's not a archiving, storing photos kind of a thing. It's it's uh, very purely a photo sharing experience where you take your very best shots. Um, and you share those with the world. And so it's, uh, it, it's very complimentary. It, Instagram complements Google photos and, uh, Apple photos and, and Flickr for that matter, you know, very nicely. They each, each, each of these have a role. And once you get into the habit of, of, uh, using each one, the way it's supposed to be used, it becomes a very satisfying experience. It's an interesting Interesting way to phrase it, and I haven't thought about it, but each one of these has a role. And and that's mm -hmm. absolutely true. I find that I find that with Facebook and Twitter. They they are not interchangeable. They occupy different parts of my social media experience. And I sort of almost use them at times for different purposes, but they they both have a role. And I guess that's what I've been looking for with Instagram is okay, what's its role? What's its purpose other than just to share pretty pictures? I know that um I had a conversation with Paul Kafasis of Rogue Amoeba a while back, mm -hmm. and he mentioned that the way he sort of approached Instagram was almost as, you know, he tried to take a snapshot a day that just reminded him of the day. You know, it didn't have to be anything spectacular, that fantastic fall foliage or, you know, that, that sweeping vista, but something that was important to him. He was using it more for himself, and if you wanted to look in, that was fine too. So, just, and that's uh, that's it, uh, and that's the interesting thing. That's uh, you, you. You raise another very good point, which is that Instagram is so simple and elegant that you can repurpose it in any number of different ways. I mean, you can make it your own. Uh, it, it's not so. It's not so uh, complicated that it, you know it's hard to personalize uh, Instagram because it's so simple, uh, so minimalist you can sort of make it your own by uh, having your Instagram feed uh, sort of suit your personality and what you want to take photos of. I mean, one of my favorite examples is Peter Souza, the, who was the, 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 the White House photographer when Obama was in office. You know, he took some, some, some really fantastic photos. But Peter Souza has found a, a new role, which is, to, uh, which is to troll President Trump. Like whenever President Trump does something stupid, uh, Peter Souza will go and find a photo of Obama uh, doing the opposite, uh, doing uh, the same thing in a not stupid way, and then he'll just kind of throw it out there to sort of troll President Trump. It's very amusing. Uh, I apologize to any of your viewers who are Republicans, but um, it's just it's it's uh, it's hilarious. It's, it's an example of you know somebody who has a very distinct kind of photography. And harnesses that photography and, and posts pictures strategically in a way that sort of has a distinct voice and a distinct message. And so many people are doing that in so many different ways. It's really quite exciting. Hmm. Yeah, okay. 
I'm, 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 I guess I'm thinking of, um, of things that have accounts that have been on Twitter. This is probably not the best example, but the first thing that jumped to my my mind when you were describing that was fake Steve jo- fake Steve Jobs on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And you know, so yeah, I, I guess you're right. I guess it is what you make it. You just have to be comfortable with it, and your audience is going to either like it or not like it. And if they don't like it, then they won't follow you. You know, it, and everybody's different. Like a lot of people on Instagram do a lot of selfies. Uh, you know, selfies are huge on Instagram. Selfie, selfie, selfie. There's friends of mine; they take selfies constantly. Um, selfies don't work for me. It's just I. I'm not a selfie kind of person. I just don't like taking photos of myself. Um, uh, it just, it's just not me. But uh, in the last year or so, I've become really addicted to uh, to bicycling, and I I do a lot of riding. And so, if you go on my feed, you're gonna see, you're you're gonna co- constantly see my bicycle as the star of of you know many of my photos. I'll I'll strategically position my bicycle you know with a dramatic sunset in the back and uh, and you know so so you'll you won't see me very much but you damn well will see my bicycle so that's <laughs> that's just me yeah it's an interesting i, I was yeah. I, i'm not sure prop is the right word but element in the photos that's that's the word i'm looking for yeah exactly that, oh yeah um you mentioned obviously they're bulk uploaders, and you can use uh, everything you mentioned to post. And we've we've sort of focused on on the Mac side of things here for some reason, I guess, because it resonates with us both. What do you? How, how do you go about editing your photos for Instagram? Do you use uh, the the typical Instagram filters? Do you do you move them over to the Mac and edit them, or do you edit them on the iPhone? What what is your preferred method? Um, well, the Instagram filters are very good. I, I really like them a lot. So when I'm out bicycling and I'm doing on the fly publishing with the Instagram app, I'll, I'll, I'll rely heavily on them. Uh, the editing tools in Instagram have come a long way. Um, there are filters, but there are also uh, sort of granular Photoshop-ish like tools in Instagram that are that are really very very good. So if you want to like fine tune a photo on the fly in in uh, in a quick way. Um, Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Uh, uh, but uh, but as I mentioned, about eighty percent of my activity, um, um, Instagram activities on the Mac. So uh, the I, I use the the editing tools. I use Google Photos quite a bit, and the editing tools in Google Photos are very good. Um, I was a little bit down on the Apple Photos app uh, editing tools. They they were just a little too simple. That is that has totally changed with the latest version that came out. It's an amazing uh, Apple Photos right now is is has delighted me to the point where I've sort of started to emphasize Google Photos and I'm starting to use Apple Photos a lot. Um, uh, at uh, professionally, since I have a Mac at the office um, and I, I have to do a lot of on the fly uh, photo editing for work related purposes, I've be, I've been using um, the Apple Photos app quite a bit. Um, there's another um, photo editor on the Mac that is just really fantastic called Polar. I don't, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's P-O-L-A-R-R. Polar. Um, I don't know who these guys are, but they're doing really nice work. Um, the, the nice thing about Polar is that it's a very powerful but very lightweight uh, photo editing app. The Mac, the Mac I have at the office is a, is a Mac Mini that is years old, so it's kind of slow. So it str- some, struggles a little bit with Apple Photos, but Polar is very lightweight um, and it runs very quickly. There are ver- there's a Mac native version of Polar. Uh, there's, a, there's a Windows native version of Polar. There's a web-based Chrome app version of Polar that it works exactly the same way as the Mac app. Uh, if you're if you're on a Chromebook, you know Chromebooks that use the Chrome OS. Uh, there's a there's a Chrome OS version. So Polar is everywhere. So no matter what computer you're on, uh, there there's a version of it, and absolutely fantastic. So I, I I do a lot of my Instagram photo editing on that. So um, so th- those are my greatest hits. Again, I'm not I'm not a, I'm not a Photoshop nerd. I've never really 
never really gotten into uh, Photoshop. It's just a little too complicated and uh, migraine inducing for me. So I keep things relatively simple. Um, but within, within those, sim- those relatively simple confines, I've become pretty good at, at photo editing. I've, I've, I've sort of come a long way. So it's, it's, there's so many good, really good applications out there, uh, for photo editing. And I didn't know if there's anything in particular that makes a good Instagram photo editor or whether it's just, okay, it's the editor you're comfortable with and it gives good results. So that's, yeah, the problem, the problem with, uh, a lot of Instagram users is they, they just stick with the uh, with the Instagram app and they use the filters. And the problem the filters are very recognizable. So if you're just using the Instagram filters, your uh, your photos take on a sort somewhat monotonous look because they're very yeah I, I I know what filter you're using. I've seen that a million times, kind of a thing. Um, so I've just I've sort of pulled back and just edited my Instagram photos as much as I would edit them for any other venue try to make them as nice as possible and then they they they're unique you know they're there are images that nobody else could take because i'm not using the 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 usual editing apps i'm using something completely different and so my photos have have a very distinct flavor and personality so who oh, you know, this is i mean this has been educational for me i've i've found some new tools i got to go check out and see if you can get me hooks on instagram but what advice would you give someone that really is is just firing this up for the first time i mean you've, you've, you've we talked about instagram having its place in your show, social media networks any any recommendations on how they find what that place should be for them and you know how to get started what kind of things you should post or ideas instead of trying to have a grand plan yeah, well, take take it step by step. I mean, download the Instagram app, uh, create an account, uh, find uh, use the built in the tools built in Instagram to find out which of your Facebook friends are already on Instagram. If you do that, you know, very quickly you'll have a a, a network of Instagram people to follow. Um, The, uh, sort of use Instagram in the right way, which is not a place to dump all your photos. It's a place to very selectively uh, share, you know, ver- your very best photos. So just uh, just um, realize that Instagram is nothing like Google Photos. It's nothing like Apple Photos. It's, it's completely, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, different animal. Um, look in Instagram for the tools that let you share to other networks, like within Instagram. When you post a photo, you can also share that photo to Tumblr, to Facebook, to Twitter. Um, so, um, so if you're if you're not really sure about Instagram, but you know you do you want to share these photos on other networks like Facebook and and Tumblr, uh, there's a way to automatically do that within uh, within Instagram. Um, if you're a little geeker, you can use if this then that. There are some recipes um, that are kind of useful. If you share to Twitter from within the Instagram app, you're not sharing the photo; you're only sharing a link, which is a problem. So, I, I, I there are, are uh, a couple of different if this then that recipes that if you set them up the right way, whenever you share to Instagram, automatically a copy of that photo gets posted to Twitter. So that's that's very handy. So it saves you a lot of time because. Um, even if not, if you're not necessarily going to be a super Instagram geek, uh, you can use it as as sort of a sort of a centralized posting utility because um, if you share photo to Instagram and you have everything set up the right way, boom, it goes to Tumblr, boom, it goes to Facebook, boom, it goes to Twitter. One step, you share you share everywhere, it, and that saves you a lot of time because you don't you don't want to be sort of manually sharing to each of the networks. It's very it would become very time consuming. Instagram is a fantastic way to sort of automate that. So you might not necessarily be an Instagram power user, but it's you can you can sort of think of Instagram as kind of a posting utility uh, that lets you you know work with all your other social networks. So, and you might not want to start with that either. You may want to just post some things to Instagram, start to get comfortable with it, then turn on the uh, the sharing aspects to your other social media presences. Absolutely, yeah. Um, one of my, one of my frustrations, um, with, uh, with Instagram is that, um, 
I mentioned how there are a lot of tools on the Mac that let you not only browse Instagrams but also publish. Um, things are a little more limited on iOS. You can only you can basically only publish to Instagram from the Instagram app. There are no there aren't a lot of third party tool alternatives for, for publishing. So that's that's a little frustrating. That didn't that didn't used to be the case, but. Um, Instagram is a little bit like Twitter. They're a little control freaky. And so, so in the past, the, their API uh, requirements let you do things that are no longer possible. They've sort of clamped down and, and uh, gotten a little stricter with that. Um, in fact, I don't fully understand this, but um, my understanding is the, uh, the uploading features in the Mac apps that I mentioned are semi unauthorized. Um, if you read, if you if you um, if you follow the literal le literal letter of the Instagram law, um, as I understand it, those apps are not really even supposed to be doing that. So, so I'm crossing my fingers that Instagram doesn't clamp down. Um, but they've been around for a while, so I've, I've sort of relaxed a little bit. But um, Technically, you're only supposed to publish to Instagram from the Instagram app, and nothing else. If you if you if you take uh, the Instagram rules literally, so how these other apps have gotten away with this, I'm not really sure. Um, but I'm I'm happy those alternatives do exist. So, I th I'm I'm pretty sure I'd have to fire it up, but I think I have an, uh, a share sheet in iOS for that. So I'm. I'm assuming that that share sheet is accessing or, or traveling through the Instagram app. Yeah, it just dumps you over to the Instagram app. Okay. Correct. Because I, I obviously I haven't used it that much, so I wasn't sure. But at least that that makes it a little bit easy. If it maybe it's a little to... limiting. The share sheet is a little limiting because it uh, you hit the share sheet, you hit Instagram to share, and then that that takes you over to the Instagram app. But at that point you only have the option to publish. There's no option to like edit or tweak or use filters and so forth. So that's not the best way to go. You probably want to save something to your photo roll and then pull it into Instagram. And at that point you have all the tools at your disposal. The share sheets, it's not, it's not the best way to do it. So. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, you've given me a uh, kind of a new view of, of what I can do with, with Instagram and maybe why I would want to be there, and especially the, the, the Mac-oriented tools I'm kind of excited about because that I tend to spend more time in front of my Macs than I do my iOS, and I spend plenty of time in front of iOS. But because it's more of a single-use device, um, I, I tend not to – Instagram just sort of out of sight, out of mind, unfortunately. Yeah. So we mentioned St. Paul Pioneer Press. Obviously, you mentioned tidbits. Where else can f f folks find you? Where are you spending most of your time right now, other than, of course, Instagram? Well, I I, uh, uh, I write a lot for tidbits. You can certainly find me there. Um, if my 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 personal HQ is my homepage, ojezap.com, ojezap.com. So that's that's kind of my my main site and and blog. Um, although I haven't really updated it a lot lately, but uh, if you want it, if you want, if you go there, you can sort of see all the other places where I'm active. So it's a good, it's a good starting point if you want to, you know, sort of find out what I'm all about. Terrific. Thank you so much for the time and the wisdom. Uh, we will do it again soon. Yeah. Thanks so much, uh, Chuck. I really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. Take care. See you later. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. All right, I'm going to have Julio's Instagram account uh, listed in the show notes if you want to follow him. I'll put mine in there just in case you want to follow me. I'm not sure what's going to be there and, and what is still there, but I'm going to try to get better with it. Uh, but definitely go check check this out because uh, it's something I know a lot of people are very enthusiastic about. And if you set it up right, maybe you can get enthusiastic about it too. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes, links to subscribe, and to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud, the Mac Voices blog, the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, and on Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard that helps you do more with your Apple tech. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at BackbeatMedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at Cashfly.com.